So now I would like to focus on one particular type of disturbance that is common and important in many different ecosystems, including in Arkansas. And this disturbance is fire. Now, fire can occur in almost any ecosystem, but ecosystems vary a lot in terms of what we often refer to as their fire regime. And the fire regime is essentially just a description of how often fires occur, how frequent fires are, and also how intense those fires are when they do occur. So fire intensity and fire frequency uh, together will determine uh, an ecosystem's fire regime. Now, let's start off by talking a little bit about the intensity. So essentially, we have two major categories of intensity. Some ecosystems uh, tend to have low intensity fires. So these are fires uh, that are known as surface or ground fires. An example here where the fire you can see is restricted to the surface um, and smaller plants and it doesn't reach into the canopy of the, the trees or the larger uh, vegetation. Uh, so low intensity fires uh, tend to be dominated by surface or ground fires. In contrast, high intensity fires are going to be one in which fire, which may start as a surface fire, but it quickly uh, spreads to the crown. And so this is a crown fire here uh, because this is the crown of the tree. When the fire reaches the crowns of the overstory trees, the tall trees in a forest, uh, those tend to be fires that kill large mature trees as well as understory plants, whereas a surface or ground fire may only kill the, the understory, the short stuff. Uh, so, so systems differ in terms of whether they see mostly these surface or ground fires or whether they uh, mostly see uh, very intense crown fires. Now, the other way that fires uh, differ in terms of their fire regime is their frequency. And we often de describe the frequency with which fire uh, is present in an ecosystem as the re fire return interval. And this is just how long on average there is between fires at a given uh, location. Now, what sort of things impact the frequency of fire in these different ecosystems? Well, the probability of there being a fire in any one place depends on three main things. First, it depends on having favorable weather conditions, so climate conditions that are conducive uh, to starting and spreading of a fire. This involves things like hot temperatures, so high temperatures, low humidity, water tends not to be good for starting a, a fire, and along with that, little precipitation, again, if things are really wet, it's harder to start a fire. And then windy conditions, maybe not necessary to start a fire, but they're certainly good for spreading fires. If conditions needed for fire are rare in an ecosystem, well then fire isn't going to be very common in that ecosystem. Another thing that influences the probability of fire and thus the fire return interval can be ignition potential. So this just means are there events uh, that could ignite a fire and start a fire in the first place. And depending on where you are, there are different sources of ignition. Now, naturally speaking, the most common form of ignition is lightning strikes. Uh, and in systems like the boreal forest, and even in the Arctic, um, 
lightning is going to be the main cause of fires. This would generally be true of most natural systems. However, as we have a lot of people living on this earth, in many places, uh, we have seen a switch from most fires being ignited by lightning to most fires being ignited by humans. Many times these fire ignitions are not on purpose. The last thing that can influence whether a fire starts or not, and, and thus the probability of having a fire, is the fuel load. So the fuel load is just the amount of combustible plant material that you have in a community. So things like grasses, the dead above ground grasses in a grassland or prairie, these are highly combustible dead leaves and branches that fall off trees, uh, dead stumps, all of this stuff uh, can be combustible and impacts the fuel load of an ecosystem. And in general, the greater the fuel load you have, the more opportunity for a fire to start and also, for, as we'll see, more opportunity for that fire to continue to burn. And in terms of the fuel load, what we often see is that as a community develops since the last fire disturbance, as that dead biomass, leaf litter, woody debris tends to build up over time, increasing the probability of fire over time. So if it's been a longer time since there was a fire in many systems, in many cases that may increase the chance of having a fire because you're not continually getting rid of that, that fuel load through other fires. So the probability of fire is dependent on favorable climate conditions, having ignition, uh, the pot potential for ignitions, and the amount of fuel uh, first, you need stuff to burn in order to have a fire. So in terms of how often fires occur and what we see in different ecosystems is that fires and their fire frequency can be limited either by climate, they can be ignition limited, not having enough potential ignitions, or the frequency may be limited by the amount of fuel available in those ecosystems. And so the frequency of fire in ecosystems, different ecosystems, tends to vary a lot. And this is just some examples of fire regimes in different parts of North America. Additionally, there's a lot of variation in terms of what limits fire in these different systems. So we can look at systems, ecosystems that, that generally have very little uh, natural fires occurring in them. And this occurs in many different places. We get very few fires uh, to an absence of fire in the Pacific Northwest coastal forests. Uh, this includes areas that are characterized as temperate rainforests and then also wetter regions of the temperate deciduous forest uh, out east often may see very little fire as well. Both of these two systems are very wet and thus fires in those places are probably strongly climate limited. It's often never dry enough for fire to start. In contrast, another place where we see that fires are naturally essentially absent are in the deserts of our southwestern states. So here, of course, it is very dry and often very hot. So the climate conditions are great for fire. But what is missing in these cases is often fuel because these systems produce very little plant biomass. They have very low productivity. Uh, thus, these systems are often strongly fuel limited. In addition, they may also be relatively ignition limited as well, as you don't have a lot of rainstorms passing over where you might get lightning. So that isn't always the case, um, but it 
It is in, it, certainly in some places. Now let's contrast that with areas that may have frequent fires, uh, but they tend to be low intensity. So they're surface fires. They're not crown fires. Um, and these fires may occur with a frequency of one to 25 years. So pretty common. So a, a one year ret fire return interval would mean the system is burning every single year. 25 year return interval means that on average, places are seeing fire return every 25 years. So fires would be frequent um, in these places. Now, one of the places where we see these frequent low intensity fires include our own region. So this is naturally occurring, of course, in the southeastern pine forests. Also often in prairies, uh, again, those are grasslands uh, in North America, we see pretty frequent fires. Um, in this case, often the climate is conducive to fire pretty much every year, but because you're getting lots of fires, what often ends up limiting the frequency of fires in these systems may be the fuel load. Because when you have a fire, it basically burns through that the fuel, um, and so it's gonna take a couple of years before that those fuel loads can build up again. We can further contrast both of these fire regimes with, with places that may get relatively less frequent fires, so fires that are occurring every 25 to 100 years, but in, instead of them being low intensity fires, when they do have a fire, they tend to be very intense, either really hot surface fires, strong intense surface fires, or they may reach into the crown. And so these end up often being what we call stand replacing fires because the trees uh, may be completely killed. And this is common actually in a lot of the boreal forest, especially out west where it's a little bit drier. Um, and also some of the chaparral systems that we see. So chaparral is that Mediterranean uh, shrubland or woodland found in California. And of course, this is where we hear a lot, especially recently, about lots of fire occurring. These systems naturally burn and burn strongly uh, every 25 to 100 years. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to briefly talk about is just looking at fires worldwide and where they occur. So this graph or this uh, map of the world actually is showing you the frequency of fire that we find in different places. So if we then look at the number of fires that we have in any given year, you can see where those fires generally occur. And the main thing to note here is that most of the fires that we have worldwide are occurring in areas that are dominated by tropical grasslands and savannas. So those tend to be places where we might find tropical dry forests or savannas. The vast majority uh, of fires are occurring there. Uh, also a fair number occurring in places where we have temperate grasslands such as in the middle of our continent in North America here. And in both tropical and temperate grasslands, uh, fire is very common. And for these systems, in some sense, it, very important for their maintenance. Because without fire, we talked a little bit about this last time, uh, they may start to become dominated by woody shrubs like this, or these trees here in this tropical savanna, uh, which if they once established in the absence of fire are going to end up out competing grasses because they're much taller than those grasses. So they can out compete them for light. And so this is especially true in places where 
the climate would favor the development of a forest if it weren't for the fire, such as we find in the grasslands or prairies in Arkansas. Uh, this is a temperate deciduous biome. So in order for many of those grasslands, especially the prairies, to be maintained, fire has to be part of the landscape. Otherwise, those systems are going to succeed uh, to a forest. Uh, they're going to go through succession and the grasses would be replaced. All right, so we'll uh, continue to talk about fire next time. But in the meantime, I want to leave you with these end of lecture questions. Uh, and these are basically just review of what we've uh, talked about today. So first, you should be able to explain how disturbances may lead to increased diversity, both at the small scale um, within a site and also how disturbances could lead to increased diversity at larger scales or the landscape scale. And so this essentially is asking you to be able to explain the intermediate disturbance hypothesis uh, at both small and landscape scales. And then finally, uh, I want you to make sure that you are able to identify one ecosystem where fire is rare because of a fuel limitation and contrast that with a system that is where fire is rare because of climate limitation. And that is it for today's lecture and I will see you on Wednesday.